Okay, so my name is Daniel. Uh, I work uh, within Mindokto. I've been there quite since uh, since we started, and I was uh, told to give this presentation uh, about the organizational growth uh, that we've had uh, during the years we started. It's been a tremendous journey, both business-wise and, and growing the organization as well. Uh, and now, five minutes before I was about to speak, uh, I was told by Marianne to, can you give this in English? So yeah, I have to retranslate <laughs> everything that I was supposed to say. But I think we'll do it quite fine. So we started out about 2013, where it was more of a concept, and during 2014, this was really an idea that uh, Mindokto could be a company that uh, would be successful. I had the opportunity to, uh, to become one of the five members that joined quite soon. Uh, everything we did was about focusing on how to scale this innovation, this idea that uh, Magnus, our founder, had together with uh, the core team that started to develop the, the technical aspects of the platform. I had the opportunity to, to come on board working within business development, uh, mostly focusing on our B2B segment. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows how our business models looks like. We have two business models. We have, of course, the public funding, but we also sell our medical services to, for example, insurance companies that have private health insurances. So I had to, I had to start working uh, with sales and business development within the B2B sector. We also had a clear ambition to grow, grow our organization, uh, grow our business, grow our service offering, uh, grow the team, uh, grow funding of course, and, and grow uh, customers. So I think all of you are aware of our magic growth when it comes to customers. We've had about 400,000 patients uh, using our digital services, but also the organization. Within a year, we tripled our growth. We became almost 15 employees, and we have pretty much had uh, doubled our organization uh, year over year. And of course, uh, not only growing the organization, we have also grown geographically. We, somewhere during between 15 and 16, we started to expand geographically. So we, we have our headquarter here in Malmö, but we opened up an office in Stockholm. Uh, besides that, we have uh, opened up, uh, not offices, but we have uh, FTEs or employees working uh, pretty much quite only remotely from different locations. So now we have uh, working places in Vesterås. We also have a full-time doctor working remotely from Kalix, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, also in Södertälje. And of course, we had an ambition to grow internationally. So we have had either exploration phases or started operations in Denmark, in Norway, UK, Netherlands, uh, France, uh, and Germany. And we are actually up and running in UK, uh, Netherlands, and France at the moment. So when we, when we closed the year, uh, last year, we were almost 135 employees. And of course, it's happened a lot uh, since. And the most recent change is when Ica invested in Midokto. And that also has some organizational changes because we had to split our companies into two. So right now we have Midokto, who is a Swedish caregiver. We also have Dockly, another brand that were born uh, late last year. They, they are only work with delivering the platform that we're using our service to operate on. So it's a separate company. So this figure is both Dockley and Mindokto. And I think we're approximately 50 employees at Mindokto and uh, 85 at Dockley. And within this investment from ICA, we also had the opportunity to, uh, to take over the Minute Clinic uh, business. And they are approximately 80 employees. So you can imagine this distress of the organization that we've had the last couple of months. But let's revert to 14, 15. We were a small team. Uh, we worked in a space, yeah, not, I would say, a sixth of this room. Everyone sitting each, yeah, next to each other. Uh, we didn't have any positions. Of course, we had former positions. We had Magnus, he was 
CEO, he was head of the business, he was doing pretty much everything and I was working as business development, sales people, uh, yeah, uh, building relations with everyone, uh, the public uh, as well. And then we have uh, four uh, engineers working with development. No needs for hierarchical structures, no needs for uh, yeah, nothing uh, is special when it comes to how, how you grow your organization. We have one goal. Everyone we meet who seems to be an interesting person and also a quite knowledgeable or uh, enthusiastic, try to bring him or her in within the organization, uh, no matter what. So we grew, we grew. Yeah, I, found, I, I met this, uh, for example, I have Anders, uh, now he's, he's on, on his own. Uh, we have been uh, working uh, as colleagues a couple of years back. The first thing I did uh, when I was employed at my doctor, call Anders. You know what, I have this really cool idea that I've been uh, yeah, picked on board to, to help grow. Can you please come and help me? And he was, mm, I have to think about it. Well, this looks like a good idea. Uh, so, I mean, that's how you grow. And I think all of you can recognize how you're actually growing. It's networking, uh, it's friends, uh, people you trust in. Uh, these are the ones that you actually would like to share a dream with. And they're quite easy to get on board, unless they have their best world in their job, like working for me doctor, for example. <laughs> so I think up until 2016, we just did it uh, without actually considering how will this affect our organization and when we're, we were approximately 20-25 employees we understand that well I think we need to, to create some kind of organizational structure because then we had an engineering team consisting of 10-15 individuals and we had uh, me and a couple of other working with the business and of course we had miners our CEO uh, working with only I would say uh, investment and investor relations so yeah, let's, let's create this organizational structure. So we had two departments, or three perhaps. We had the, the technical uh, engineering team, we had the business team, and then we had our healthcare team. Uh, since we are a caregiver, we needed some, some uh, uh, spots when it comes to, uh, for example, you need to have a vaccinate chef when you're working as a caregiver. So th there are some uh, legal or legislation requirements for uh, yeah, positions that you need to have within the company. So we had a quite flat, uh, really easy organization with three organizational units. So did we, did we change anything else? Well, yeah, we, we actually changed CEO. We, we got a new CEO, uh, Qualotta. Uh, what she did was say, let's do more of the same. We need to grow, uh, we need to grow more customers, we need to grow our funding, and we have to, to uh, increase the team. So, we all did that uh, for a couple of years. I think somewhere uh, mid-2016, we understood we need some supporting structure. It can't be only about growing the business. Uh, of course, we had had uh, a CEO, or uh, not a CEO, a CFO, Economy chef, uh, during our life cycle, someone needs to manage our budget. Uh, that's yeah, pretty much common sense for everyone. And we had the opportunity to have a professional working with that uh, throughout. But when it comes to uh, people and culture or HR, uh, nothing. So, so we didn't have any plan or a strategy for how to develop our employees, how to keep them uh, satisfied, uh, can we work with uh, uh, some kind of uh, education, uh, how do we uh, do uh, any yearly uh, or annual uh, merit review, salary review, everything like that. Uh, we, we just uh, understood, uh, we probably didn't understand the importance of, of actually taking care of the organization, the people within the organization. It's, it's quite easy to, to stand here and talk about, yes, we need to be more focused. We, we of course, everyone knows that the employees within your, an organization is the most important asset you have. But when everyone is focusing on scaling and growing the business, it's, it's really easy to uh, yeah, down-prioritize the, um, the urgency of taking care of them. So we employed Qualot, who is people, uh, head of our people and culture, mid-2016. So she had to work uh, by establishing all the supportive processes 
when it comes to people and culture. And it was not only about taking care of people within the organization. As, a, as an uh, employee, you need to have some, some um, what do uh, now you need to help me out here. Uh, law method, as we have, we have rena law call. Uh, legislation, there was, uh, yeah, regulations within legislation. For example, arbetsmiljö. Uh, since you're working as an, uh, uh, yeah, since we grew, uh, there was all of these rulings that we, we weren't quite aware of them. Um, but you need to consider them, of course, and you need to, to comply with them. Uh, so there has been a lot of of working with stabilizing our internal processes, and I think this is a dog camp. Struggle. Yeah, struggle. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think this is this is something that, uh, for example, Health Technologic or other incubators really can uh, can benefit from. Um, normally, you have really good experience when it comes to uh, developing your business, defining strategies. Uh, helping out when it comes to seeking investment or connect you with uh, investors. But I would say, I think Minokta would have had quite benefits from someone who is really experienced in taking care of the organization and help us, giving us advice. Of course, we've, we've been given the advice numerous times, but I think you actually need someone hands-on, uh, almost working as a con consultant for the organization telling us what to do, because it's so easy to down-prioritize it. So I think right now we have managed to, to yeah, build a stable foundation for continuing growing uh, both our organization and our business. But of course we will, within a couple of years, understand that yeah, we probably would have should, we should have done this or that. Um, but, but right now we have... We have uh, Committee Cup. Uh, caught up. Yeah, caught up. Caught up with all the supporting processes. Good to have a native translator within, <laughs> within, within the audience. So that's pretty much the experiences uh, I have to share. And, and feel free to ask any questions. Uh, Petronella, <laughs> my, my colleague, have a question. Yeah. Okay, you haven't mentioned anything about the challenge to have 150 doctors working for us spare time out in the country, and now we have the 80 nurses on different clinics. Good, good, Re really good question. Um, <laughs> because that's something that we will or I uh, forget about all the time. This is the internal uh, workforce that uh, working with creating both the platform and the service. And as Petronella says, we have almost 150 doctors working either as employees or as consultants. We have uh, midwives, we have uh, psychologists and physiotherapists as well. And of course they should be uh, addressed and treated as a part of the family. But it's so easy to forget about them. So yes, uh, thank you for being a stand-in when it comes to people and culture. Because they are equally as important or perhaps the most important asset we have uh, as, together with everyone else working within the doctor. Yeah, sure. How did you find us the very start when you were a small team in the beginning? How, how did we? Find us the very start. Uh, well, I had the opportunity to come on board when we actually had an angel investor. Uh, so then, then we, we knew that we had a burn rate and a, a cash flow that would last for approximately a year. Uh, before that, uh, I would say it was uh, just uh, uh, some enthusiastic uh, friends working together trying to uh, to realize a dream. Um, so exactly, I, I don't think they had any finance during that day, but... Uh, we quite early got uh, your accident award. Yeah, uh, when I joined, we had the opportunity to get one customer, uh, one insurance company. They uh, We created an exclusive deal with them, so they helped us uh, developing our service by funding us uh, for uh, two years. So we have secured one deal and, and during that time we also had our first angel investor. So that's why when we or they uh, understood that yeah this could something this could be something that we can uh, uh, live upon. When you when you started to work with the, with the people and culture 
can you mention anything concrete that, that is different today, an internal process that you're working with? Yeah, for, for example, the, the annual merit review. Yeah. Uh, taking care of, uh, I mean, working as we have we have started up uh, leadership development programs, for example, and of course, uh, when you're growing an organization, it's it's almost or not almost, but yeah, it's it's high. It's quite likely that it's the one with most experience or most technical skills that will have a leadership position within within the organization. Uh, perhaps not the one with the most uh, yeah leadership experience. So yes, something we have uh, worked with uh, is to uh, developing leadership skills for the team. And now you are including everyone, all the doctors and the nurses that are working part time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's also a big shift. And of course, working more structured with keeping and uh, establishing and creating an, a culture, uh, something we have always said uh, would like to, but we haven't worked actively with creating a culture. So a lot of processes that's been initiated since she uh, got on board. I think you work with, cultural-wise, you have ethics, values. Could you mention some of those? Well, the, the core ethic, ethics or values, I think we, we, uh, we set them quite from the start, is that we should, of course, create a service that uh, is sustainable from a society point of view, since our funding is mainly based by the public funding. Uh, we should also create something that is uh, creating room or space for our healthcare professionals to get a better work environment. I think this is the way to look at digitization. Uh, normally, when you work at, at the clinic or uh, within the healthcare sector, you're qu quite bound to physical structures. And by creating room with uh, digital tools, you can then start to, for example, work from home a couple of days, as we have a doctor working remotely. So um, that's something that we have really, really looked into and have uh, held quite values or high values in to create a better work environment for them. And can we, can we uh, be seen as a catalyst or can we, can we be seen as, uh, as a good example, for example, within the public healthcare system? I think this is, uh, this is a really crucial piece for them. Uh, we all know that they're working to be considered as a more attractive uh, uh, company or, or a place to work uh, for. So there are lots of uh, different things uh, that you need uh, to work with. And of course the patient or customers, creating a better access uh, or faster access, a better service uh, experience when it comes to delivering healthcare. I know we're running out of time. Uh, you will be back this afternoon. Yes. Do we have some more questions? Yeah, well, I think we have two, two final questions. Uh, have you, in the, early, uh, in the early years, did you work anything with uh, having the employees take a stake in the company, like in part ownership or in options and so on? Yeah, we have had different uh, incentive programs uh, throughout. Uh, of course, uh, I was fortunate to be um, be on board quite quite early, so then the programs looked a bit different. Uh, but that's something that we've tried to, uh, uh, yeah, to have to, what to to keep uh, the possibility uh, to have some extra stake. It's difficult, uh, of course, uh, now that we've been yeah, become so big. But uh, yes, uh, we have uh, we have quite a, quite a few that are part 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 time uh, owners within the company. When you grew from 5 to 14, how did you manage to attract people to uh, come on board with the all friends like Andos? How did you convince them? I think it was quite self-explanatory. Uh, most of the ones that we, uh, we brought on, they had some kind of experience with the public healthcare system. Uh, when, we, when you have someone like Magnus who is I would say he's, he's very charismatic, he had a, a fantastic vision about this is what we're aiming to, uh, to create. It wasn't really hard to be convinced that this is a place to work for actually. Um, it's been, yeah, we've been fortunate. Uh, I think that is one of the, the, the best things about working with Minocto. When we did some, uh, 
some surveys about uh, employee motivational factors and such, we have had really high scores on, on those kinds of uh, examinations or surveys. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, the final last question. No, we are a caregiver. So we actually provide digital care. So what opportunities and the planning for the future are you looking for? Uh, right now, I think, first of all, we, uh, we have started to become physical. Uh, we have always delivered our service uh, within a digital context where you can actually meet our doctors online. But since uh, a couple of months ago, when we, uh, when we acquired Minute Clinic, uh, we are um, um, trying to uh, establish physical structures. We have eight today, four in Stockholm and four in Gothenburg. So you can, you can uh, consider them as, uh, as primary care units. Um, so that's, of course, one strategy that we're uh, trying to realize. And Dockley will keep um, the international uh, scaling ambition uh, within their company. Yeah, I, so I, will, yeah, I will stick around for a while. So if okay. someone would like to have additional questions, and we will be here uh, in the afternoon as well. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you.